Hello friends, this video on data handling part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So based on whatever we have learned about the basics of probability, we will now try to look at some of the questions. So question number one, list the outcomes you can see in these experiments. Spinning a wheel. So as you can see here in the picture, spinning a wheel. So here in this wheel, what are the possible options that we have? So what are the possible outcomes? The possible outcomes could be A, B, C and D. These are the possible outcomes because here also you have A. So the outcome would be A. So you have four possible outcomes. Tossing two coins together. Now any coin, so whenever you talk about any one coin, that one coin, whenever you toss that coin, it has two options. It can give you a head or a tail. Now, when you have two coins together, now you are tossing two coins together. So one option is now let us note down all the options. So the first option could be that you tossed both the coins together. So you got head in both of them. So that is option one. Option two is you tossed both of them together. In the first coin, you got a head. In the second coin, you got a tail. Option three is in the first coin, you got a tail and in the second coin, you got a head. And the last option could be in the first coin, you got a tail and in the last coin also you got a tail. So what are the total number of outcomes? So the total possible outcomes are four when you are tossing two coins together. Now, in case you had been tossing three coins together, in that case, it could have been something like this. So the possible options could have been something like this head, 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 tail, head, tail, head and so on. So if you want, you can try this out as an exercise and see what are the total number of possible outcomes when you toss three coins together. Question number two, when a die is thrown, list the outcomes of an event of getting a prime number, not a prime number. Okay. Now, whenever we throw a dice, what are the total number of possibilities? So total possibilities, a dice with a dice, the total possibility, total number of possibilities would be six. So it could give a one, a two, three, four, five or six. So the total number of outcomes is six, right? Now. In the first option, we have to find out what is the probability of getting a prime number. So probability of getting a prime number. So this would be equal to total number of outcomes that is 6. And in the numerator, we have to find out the total outcomes for a prime number. So out of these 6 numbers, what are which are the prime numbers? So the prime numbers that we have are 2, 3 and 5. So these are the prime numbers that we have. So we actually have three prime numbers. So therefore the total possibilities of getting a prime number is three. So the probability of getting a prime number would be three by six. Similarly, what would be the probability of getting a non prime number? So how many non prime numbers do we have? So the non prime numbers are one, four and six. So they are also three in number. So this would also be three by six. So the probability of getting a prime number and the probability of getting a not prime number are equal. A number greater than five. Now again here, how many numbers are greater than five? Out of the total possibilities, how many numbers are greater than 5? Only one number, that is only 6 is greater than 5. So the possibility of getting a number greater than 5 is equal to 1 by 6 because we just have one number which is greater than 5. Probability of getting a number not greater than 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, all of these are not greater than 5. Therefore, the probability of getting a number not greater than 5 will be equal to 5 by 6 because we have 5 such numbers which are not greater than 5. So therefore, the total possibilities of getting a number not greater than 5 is 5 and this divided by the total possible outcomes which is 6. So this would be 5 by 6. Question number 3. 
Find the probability of getting an ace from a well shuffled deck of 52 playing cards. Now, as we have discussed before, that out of these total 52 cards, now we have total 52 cards, and out of these 52 cards, we have four types of cards, right? Like the spade, diamond, club, and heart. And each of these cards, there are 13 cards of each of these types. Now, what are these 13 cards? For each of them, we have a ace. We have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, till 10. And we have a king, a queen, and a jack. So that this makes the 13 cards. Right? And these 13 cards exist for all of these. So this makes the pack of 52 cards. Now we have to find out the probability of getting an ace. Now, in order to find the probability of getting an ace, first of all, we will have to find out the total possible outcomes with 52 cards. Now, since you have 52 cards, so the total possible outcomes will be 52. Now we have to find out the total possible outcome for an ace. So how many aces do you have in these pack of 52 cards? So you will have one ace for spade, you will have one ace for diamond, you will have one ace for club, you will have one ace for heart. So total you have four aces. So the probability of getting an ace is, is four. The probability of the total possible outcomes with ace is four. So the probability of getting an ace would be four by 52, which is equal to one by 13. Question number four, find the probability of getting a red apple. So here in this picture, you see that there are few red apples and few green apples. So what is the probability of getting a red apple? So what is the probability of getting any apple? Basically, what is the total possible outcomes? Total, how many apples are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the total possible outcomes is seven. And what is the probability that the apple is red? One, two, three, four. So four. So the probability of getting a red apple is four by seven. Question number five. If you have a spinning wheel with three green sectors, one blue sector and one red sector, what is the probability of getting a green sector? What is the probability of getting a non-blue sector? So first of all, let us try to draw the spinning wheel. Only then we will be able to solve this. So let us say this is our spinning wheel. And as per the question, we have three green sectors. One, two, three. So these are the three green sectors. We have one blue sector and we have one red sector. So these are the different sectors that we have on the wheel. Now what is the probability of getting a green sector? So the probability of getting a green sector would be how many green sectors you have? One, two, three. So that is the possibility of getting a green sector. So possible out, possible green outcomes are three. And what are the total possible outcomes? One, two, three, four, five. So this would be three by five. So the probability of getting a green sector is three by five. Now, what is the probability of getting a non-blue sector, non-blue sector? So, in order to find out the possibility of a non-blue sector, let us first find out the possibility of a blue sector. Now, there are, there are different ways of doing it. Now, one option is find out the possibility of non-blue sector directly. So possibility of a non-blue sector. Now, what are the various, what is the total possible outcomes of non-blue sector? So this is a non-blue sector, this is a non-blue sector, this is a non-blue sector, this is a non-blue sector. So there are four possible outcomes for a non-blue sector. And what is the total number of outcomes? That is again five. So the possibility of getting a non-blue sector is four by five. So you see everywhere when you try to solve a problem on probability, you just need to remember this simple logic that to find out probability of any event, you will have to find out the total possible outcomes for that event divided by the total possible outcomes in that entire 
experiment. Now, when you throw a dice, the total possible outcomes on throwing a dice is always six. When you play with cards, the total possible number of outcomes will always be 52 because there are 52 cards in the pack. Right. So every time you will have to calculate it like this, the possible outcomes for that event divided by the total possible outcomes for that entire random experiment. So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson on data handling and I hope that this lesson would have helped you. Now, not only the problems which I have solved here, try to solve more and more problems so that you gain confidence on the concepts. If you think you need to revisit any of the concepts, please do so. So uh, with this, I would conclude this lesson. See you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.